Yeah, I know this review is super late, deal with it. I've been hard at work on my upcoming Naruto and Ready Player One Geek Theology episodes, so I apologize this took so long. I also apologize because I was gonna wear my Star Wars shirt for this and I like couldn't find it. But it's cool, I'm not gonna stress about it because I am one with the Force, and the Force is with me. Rogue One, a Star Wars story, is the latest in a new wave of Star Wars movies from Lucasfilm and Disney. The film is a kind of prequel to the original trilogy of films. But don't worry, because I'm not talking about those prequels. I am delighted to say there is no Jar Jar Binks here. Me called Jar Jar Binks. Hate that guy. So remember how the whole Star Wars thing starts way back in A New Hope with Princess Leia smuggling out some blueprints for a top secret weapon called the Death Star to the Rebels? Well this movie takes place right before that, and I mean like right before that. It tells the story of the Rebel team that actually stole those blueprints in the first place. So if you saw the posters or the previews for Rogue One and you were like, wait, where's Luke or Chewbacca or the guy with the jetpack and the cool helmet? Well the answer is in terms of the franchise, those guys weren't really around yet. So although this is a Star Wars movie, we do have to judge it by its own merit. And the good news is, Rogue One is pretty cool. But the film feels heavier and more serious than a lot of the other Star Wars movies do. In fact, the last act of Rogue One is basically a war movie. The story is fairly straightforward, but is still engaging. And I love how this movie cleverly addressed a massive plot hole in the Star Wars mythology that fans have been making fun of for years. Rogue One has some of the best action sequences and aerial space battles in the franchise's history. We're also introduced to a whole new crop of characters most of whom, unfortunately, don't survive to the end credits. And that's not really a spoiler because the movie's been out for like three months. Diego Luna's character, Cassian Andor, in particular, is a great addition to the mythology. There's also some great fan service and nods to the mythology to make Star Wars nerds happy. And yes, Darth Vader is back with this movie, but if you're looking to see a ton of him, you might be disappointed. He's only in a couple of scenes, which made some people angry, but I actually really liked it that way because the scenes that he is is in are amazing. The visual effects are mind-blowing. And speaking of special effects, thanks to some borderline creepy CGI, Carrie Fisher makes a quick cameo in the film, made all the more nostalgic and bittersweet by her untimely death just a few weeks after the film's release. My only gripe with this movie is that it's a little bit slow at times, especially like in the middle. So here's my shameful confession. We went to a pretty late showing of this movie the first time I saw it, and I may have Falling asleep in the middle, but it's not my fault. I know that's gonna lose me some nerd points, but it was a long day. Final verdict, I'm gonna give Rogue One a Star Wars story an eight and a half out of 10. The greatest triumph of this movie is that by the end of it, you are itching to go home and pop back in episode four, A New Hope, and dive right back into this classic story. Now it's time for stuff I like, where I talk about something that I'm watching or reading or listening to that you should too. So as you may know, I have a series here on my channel called Geek Theology, where I talk about why I like certain pop culture properties, explain different things I've learned from them and then just for fun I write songs about them. And about a year ago while I was still doing research for it, I ran across this book on Amazon called Rise of the Time Lords, A Geek's Guide to Christianity. The author, Michael Belote, is an engineer, a total egghead when it comes to science, and a huge fan of science fiction. So in the book he explains different ideas and doctrines in the Christian faith by relating them to various concepts from chemistry, engineering, physics, all that stuff. So if you're interested at all in faith, religion, or Christianity, or you're just really into stuff like quantum physics, the theory of relativity, or Schrodinger's cat, then check out Rise of the Time Lords, A Geek's Guide to Christianity. I've had a great time reading it, I've gotten some really cool ideas from it, and I've learned some stuff that has genuinely hurt my brain. Thanks for watching as always. If you like this video, make sure you click the thumbs up button, subscribe to my channel. Finally, make sure you let me know in the comments below what you thought of Rogue One. Thanks for watching, I'm Gary Mitchell and we'll see you next time. Stay cool, stay blessed, stay in touch.